So, good evening again. And uh, tonight I'm looking at this idea of starting anew, just like waking up to that first morning. And it uh, came to me, uh, this title, this theme, because we're in the period of the Jewish High Holy Days of Rosh Hashanah, which uh, ended on Sunday of this weekend, and um, which began the 10 days of awe that lead up to Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. And you know, in this, these High Holy Days is the theme of new beginnings, setting intentions for greater good in the new year, similar to our Western New Year. But the major difference is that in the Jewish High Holy Days, there's this idea of this is a time for deep introspection, examination of our actions over the past year, and especially of uh, acknowledging our transactions, taking responsibility for ways that we haven't shown up at our best, uh, particularly where we may have harmed or hurt others. It's a time for making amends, for doing good deeds, and after admitting to our failures ways that we didn't live up to our divine potential to set intentions to do better going forward. So it said that at Rosh Hashanah is a time when God judges the righteous and the wicked and basically decides who gets to live or die in the new year. So God inscribes the names of the righteous in the book of life. So right there, you know, it is decided they get to live on and blots out the names of the wicked, which basically represents a death sentence. And those who fall in between, who aren't quite righteous or wicked, well, they have up until Yom Kippur, uh, that'll be Sunday, the Day of Atonement, to make amends. Now, on the surface, this really does not seem to align with our science of mind philosophy, right? I mean, we don't believe in a God outside of us, first of all, so right there, um, you know, things are out of alignment. We believe that God's nature lies in everything and everyone, and we definitely don't believe in a God that ever condemns us. Now, we teach that any suffering that we incur humanly is simply due to a law of cause and effect that's always at play and that's always responding to our thoughts and actions. So to us, the negative conditions in our lives or in the world represent ways that we have not yet awakened to our divine nature, that we are not yet fully aware of that pure love, that joy, that abundance, that wholeness, that goodness that God is at all times in us and around us. And so to the degree that we don't recognize that, that we haven't awakened to that, we create, you know, we have belief systems and behaviors that come out of those belief systems that create negative experiences, negative conditions in the world. But we also believe that no matter how much we may go against that core divine nature, it's still there, untouched at the core of our being. It's still there as a potential. So no matter how unloving I be in a given moment, there's still a capacity for me to call forth love. I'm just not doing it in that moment. I'm not feeling aligned with it. We believe that our divine nature will keep impelling us in this lifetime and beyond to transcend those limited beliefs that create negative consequences. You know, we, there's that something in us that when things aren't going well is always seeking to move us out of any kind of suffering. And we would say that's the nature of God. That's the nature of God that's impelling us to try to make good of negative situations in the world. You know, our founder, Ernest Holmes, was clear 
in his philosophy that at some point in the evolution of our individual souls, our consciousness in this life and beyond, we'll all awaken and be emancipated from our suffering. So we do not subscribe to the literal um, story here of Rosh Hashanah, or actually to many of the stories if they were interpreted literally in the Bible or other scriptures. Um, however, we absolutely look to these scriptures for spiritual meaning. And we look at scripture in a metaphysical way, so beyond the literal, to find a deeper spiritual meaning to you know, what is written versus the, the literal story or um, you know, passage that we are reading. The stories and the ideas presented in them are symbolic of legitimate spiritual principles, universal principles that are relevant to us all throughout all time. And so one of the core beliefs in Science of Mind is that that infinite nature of God lies as a potential in everything and everyone. So again, it is infinite, and we are finite expressions of it. It is always looking for some greater way to experience and express itself beyond what we've known before. So no matter how much love we've had in our lives at any given time, there's something else that's still going to look for new ways to share that vibration of love. No matter how much joy we've had, we're still going to be looking for new ways to experience and express joy, abundance, etc. And we're all about staying open to that evolution and expansion of consciousness that allows us to step into those greater dimensions of love and joy and abundance and wholeness. So in these uh, Jewish high holy days, the idea of taking responsibility for our transgressions, making amends, doing good deeds, it's not to put a damper on the celebration. It is not, as a Jewish comedian once said, trust my people to take a perfectly wonderful holiday and then add this element of guilt to it. It has absolutely nothing to do with it. The deeper theme is that in whatever ways we're not experiencing and expressing God's nature, there's a capacity for us to change and to create a new, to start a new, to create new, wonderful, positive experiences. And that, that is completely in alignment with our science of mind philosophy. You know, the idea that the potential of God's nature in us is greater than our past or present mistakes or circumstances. Now, as far as this idea of the righteous having their names inscribed in the book of life or condemned to death, let's look at the idea of, you know, what is the nature of life? Go ahead, talk amongst yourselves. What is the nature of life? The nature of life is to thrive, right? Don't we always feel an impulse to thrive? It's to move forward, to keep evolving, to keep expanding into new dimensions of joy and love and goodness in every way we possibly can. And to us, the idea of the righteous, you know, the ones whose names get inscribed in the book of life, well, to us, righteous is about our thoughts being righteous in the sense of realizing our oneness with God, of sensing that presence of God's nature in all beings, in all situations, whether or not they are reflected on the outer plane, that there's an underlying goodness in everything and everyone to be revealed. That is righteous thinking. It's thinking along lines of spiritual truth. 
Wherever we stay anchored in false beliefs, in error beliefs, in a sense of separation, in the ideas of I'm not enough, they're not enough, there isn't enough, you know, I could never love someone like that. I'm never going to be able to accept this, any of that kind of thinking. We're denying ourselves the experience of God's nature, that life force fulfilling itself. And those limiting beliefs need to die off for us to move forward. We can't you know, hold on to those things that are causing us problems and at the same time expect some kind of new experience, more wonderful experience. You know, and even in the idea of God, you know, sentencing the wicked to death, there are some rabbis that have actually interpreted this as death being a purification process. It's a purification where the soul then gets to rid itself of those patterns that cause transgressions. And so it is purified and then able to move forward and to step into greater good. So if we contrast this idea of the Jewish New Year and the time of reflection and ex, you know, really examining where uh, there's been wrongdoing on our part, compared to the uh, Western New Year, which is a time of just partying. And of course, we set our resolutions. Well, let me ask you, think of the times that you've set a resolution and where you've met and fulfilled those resolutions or where you haven't. And I guarantee you, if you go back, it's like in those situations where we met where we fulfilled those resolutions, where we created that greater good in our lives that we were looking for, it's because we were willing to let go of some old way of thinking, some old patterns, and adopt new ones. We had to accept, look at where we were not uh, acting or thinking in a way that would support the greater good we were seeking. And we had to be willing to work on that and change that. You know, when we didn't fulfill the intentions, probably we just, you know, were hoping somehow they would come to us without us having to go through any process of change. You know, if, if your intention, if your resolution is to have more love in your life, guess what? You're going to have to accept, look at the ways that your thoughts and your actions today don't uh, attract that to you and change that. You know, we have to ask the question, what do I need to change to have that new fresh start? As I was saying, we can't hold on to old patterns that create negativity for us and just expect the negative experiences and conditions to go away. And so that's the spirit of these holy days and the good news that they bring is that we have the capacity within us to start anew, to create anew, to bring forth greater good. And it's not just during these days, okay? These represent a spiritual principle that we always have the possibility of starting anew. And so as I was reflecting on this, I was reflecting on, well, what what would be something that I think we could all be served by to set an intention for and to look at where might we want to examine how we've been up until now, patterns that we're engaged in now. And I think one of, one of the patterns that inhibits our life expression, our experience of greater good, is the thought pattern of resentment. You know, whether we're resenting or feeling any contempt toward ourselves, something about ourselves, about situations, or about others, we are shutting the door in the face of love. We're just slamming that shut. We can't be in a place of resentment 
and at the same time feel love, feel joy. It's you know, an energy that just creates more and more negativity. And the antidote to that you know, is for us to accept, to accept what's going on, to accept that, OK, maybe there was this thing that happened that I'm not really pleased about in myself or this pattern that I tend to engage in that I'm not pleased about myself. Maybe there's a situation going on right now. Aren't there a whole list of situations we could list right now that every now and then we just feel a little bit of resentment that things aren't back to the way they were? Uh, when we're feeling that resentment, we're certainly not feeling joy. But we just want to accept, OK, that's where it is or, or where we are at this time. Or maybe if it's someone that we're resenting to accept, OK, that's, that's their behavior right now. But then we can take that and say, however, how do I make good of this? How do I move out of resentment into something constructive and positive to make good of this situation? We've seen any number of ways that goodness has come out of the difficulties and challenges that we're being faced with today. The creativity, you know, ways that people have been creative and staying connected and you know, just ways that people have come to love and support each other. So I feel this uh, piggybacks on what Dr. Mark was offering us to do this Sunday to you know, maybe watch the news but turn the volume off and to accept and bless you know, anything that we were watching to put that vibration of love to it is I would ask us, what is just one thing about ourselves that we might resent or condemn? That we could say, I accept that this has happened or it's occurring, but what good can I make of it? If there's one person that we resent, I accept how this person is showing up. It's just the way they are. It's where they are in consciousness. But I know there's a greater goodness in them than their behavior, so that we're not staying stuck in the resentment. Even the smallest steps that we take in this direction move us in the direction of greater good and a fuller expression of life. When we keep reminding ourselves that God's goodness in us and God's goodness in others is greater than our current behaviors and circumstances, and we follow up with any action we can that's in alignment with greater love, greater generosity, greater compassion. That's how we begin to start anew. That's how we find the new ways to fulfill the impulse of life that seeks to experience and express the goodness that lies within us all. And so let's take this moment to turn inward. And I invite you to call to mind any aspect of your being that you hold in resentment or that you condemn, a way that you feel you aren't living up to your potential or you haven't. And whatever that is, align with that part of your divine nature that's pure compassion, that's able to look at this and say that, OK, you know, perhaps it's true. You haven't shown up at your best here. But it's the best you knew to do up until now. And identify what quality of God you would express more fully if you weren't engaged in this pattern, this behavior this past action. And feel that quality within you and imagine yourself sharing it more generously with others. Commit to any actions without labeling them too big or too small, any actions that would allow you to express this quality of God going forward. And now call to mind any person whom you hold in resentment. Just take a deep breath. And 
just allow yourself to accept that this is who and how they are based on their thoughts and beliefs up until now. But just hold that idea for them that God in them is greater than any way that they may not be showing up in alignment with their divine nature, in a sense to just bless them, knowing that they are an expression of God no matter what. And know that as you accept these truths for yourself and others, you release old patterns that inhibit your experience and your expression of love, of goodness, of wholeness. And through this process, you create new avenues for love and goodness to be more fully expressed in your life. And so from this place in consciousness, please join me in knowing the truth about some of the human challenges that we face along this journey of life in this dimension. Knowing that that life, that love of God is truly the one life that lives through all creation through all beings everywhere, that we are all absolutely filled and surrounded by that vibration, that nature of the divine. Let us absolutely join in knowing for those who are facing any kind of discomfort or pain around change, that the nature of God is changeless, that things on the human, uh, human plane change that eventually the ultimate change humanly is when we no longer exist on this earth, but the spirit of God in us all in which we are always interconnected is changeless, is birthless, and is deathless, and is always there to be experienced in some new way. Let us know for those situations in the world where there is dis-ease or discord that the nature of the divine is health, wholeness, vitality, and that as we align with that vibration, know its presence everywhere, that the avenues for anything that looks unlike health and wholeness and well-being are created for healing, for the revelation of that pattern of divine perfection that lies at the center of each and every one of us. Let us know for those who feel challenged in the area of creative expression, in finding the right kind of work, in being creatively expressed in any way, that that creativity of the divine lies within all of us. There is a way that we all have of giving of its nature that is of value to others. And that as we know this and claim this for everyone, shifts occur for those who feel out of alignment with that to step into those places where their unique talents and gifts are absolutely valued and appreciated. We know that this presence of the divine is infinite and knows nothing of lack and limitation. And so where there are any human experiences of lack and limitation, we know that there's a greater giver, receiver vibration in all beings everywhere that absolutely reveals itself. It is revealing itself now and expanding our capacities to give and receive abundantly, generously. And I absolutely know that the core nature of this one life is love, that we are all expressions of love. And so as we remember that truth where there is any resistance to that love, anywhere that, that is diminished or impeded, that we open up the channels for it to flow out greater love for ourselves, greater love in the actions that we take in the world, greater love for others. And as we open those gates, then we just see so much more love coming back. And the nature of that love is for greater good to be felt and known in all parts of itself. And so let's honor its nature.
by setting our own intentions for greater good in silence. And so whatever these intentions may be, greater good for ourselves, for loved ones, for situations in the world, we know that we are feeling the impulse of that divine love for greater realization of itself throughout creation. And as we know that God is in all these situations, good is revealed. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And from this place, we bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God and the same truth. And it is with your heart filled with gratitude for knowing this truth that I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, amen.